I thought all we right. all abstained. What's that? I thought we all abstained. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome everyone. Um, it is nearly 12 o'clock. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started and welcome to the Cinco de Mayo edition of the Ocean Beach Networking Group meeting by Zoom. Our speaker today is Ashley, and it's Wilson, right? Yep, Wilson. Ashley Wilson's gonna be speaking today. Thank you so much for speaking. Um, but before we turn it over to Ashley, we're gonna go ahead and do the icebreaker question. And I'm guessing we'll get a few more people joining the call between now and 12.05. Um, and so I think I mentioned um, the icebreaker question to everyone, but in case you didn't hear me, it is what is your favorite taco? And you could even mention the restaurant that you like it from. Hey, Nate, so the icebreaker question, I don't know if you can hear me, but is what is your favorite kind of taco? Because it's Taco Tuesday and it's Cinco de Mayo. So having said that, um, do I have any volunteers to go first? Okay. Oh, Mel, please. Um, so I really, really like the uh, surf and turf or uh, meat and shrimp at Mike's Taco. <laughs> it's freaking delicious, but um, I also really like to make them at home. And today we're doing um, um, chicken and ahi. So, yeah. That sounds really good. Now, for some of the new people, Tell us a little bit about why you're networking and that kind of stuff if you care to. Sure. So I'm a design consultant with Three Day Blinds for the last year and a half. I'm on furlough, so I've been taking my um, real estate course and plan on being licensed in about two months. Love the design consulting and they're asking me to come back when we open up. So I'm a little torn, but um, I've known some really great realtors and I think I could be just as good at the uh, details. Awesome. Care clients. Well, it's so good to see you. I know Mercy's happy to see you too. Um, so let me call on Mike Mogger to go next. Yes, thanks Chuck. Um, my favorite taco is uh, just the OG ground beef at home with the taco seasoning, fry your corn tortilla. Um, Cheese, tomato, you know, whatever. Avocados, a must. Um, it's the best. So it's what you know. Always growing up to, and and um, it sounds amazing for the season. Yeah. Yeah. With a uh, Corona or so or two. <laughs> um, Mike Mogger, Eyes Insurance, independent insurance broker. You better right do it out here. Uh, when the call was starting, we were talking about restaurants. Um, what I've been helping my clients and other clients is, that, you know, what's what's the new norm, and that is the delivery. You know, right now, when this starts opening up, th these restaurant capacities are going to be at 50 percent, and these, you know, they're not going to be able to survive off of that. So, uh, delivery is going to be a huge thing, and so I've been helping against some of my current clients and new clients reaching out and find out the best option for commercial auto if, if it's their employees driving. You know, a lot of these people are against the Grub Hubs and the whatever the you know uber eats because they're taking 30 percent plus of the, of the you know of their you know their money so yeah so um it's been it's been good and um you know i'm excited to help answer any questions so please reach out if you have any personal line or commercial business line questions uh with insurance awesome i didn't even think about the insurance implications of all the delivery but that makes perfect sense um so dan dennison would you like to go next sure um Boy, that's a hard question, which is a favorite taco. <laughs> um, I think my favorite right now is uh, a little place called JV's over in um, um, off of Marino Boulevard, and they make really great tacos you can pick up. And I, two I really like, one's called the Sonora, Sonora Killer, which is really good, and the other's a Philly cheesesteak. But always fish tacos are great. A Philly and, um, cheese steak, wait, is it a Philly cheesesteak taco? Or yes. Oh, or, wow. Well, they can make it a taco or a burrito. Yeah. It's really good stuff. And uh, you can get really, really big ones uh, with two big tortillas. That's enough to last two people for a couple meals. That's mm -hmm. pretty nice. 
And um, I grew up in San Diego and uh, moved away, went in the Navy and went back to school and uh, ran large scale real estate projects around the country in four other states before I came back. And so what I'm doing now is I'm continuing to do real estate um, for both commercial and residential. And what I really enjoy is helping people make good decisions. And so many times uh, I, I think the real estate process is really driven by the agent rather than for the client. And I think the client's best interest is what's really, really important. And what that means is that mo in most cases, uh, transactions that I work on, I, I wind up saying to the client, you know, I know you really like that, but you really don't, you're not prepared to spend the money on the, on the plumbing and the electrical and the foundation that really needs to be done. So uh, unfortunately you have to kind of scale back a little bit. Anyway, I enjoy doing it and it's, it's great being here in Ocean Beach and it's really nice having the beaches open again. And this little video I did was down in OB a while ago. I thought it was really great. A guy with his a big dog's pulling him as he served. Thanks. Well done. It's really good to see you, Dan. And I'm going to call on, it's Casey, right, with North County Auctions? Guilty. Guilty. Please go, Casey. Oh, my favorite type of taco is the uh, El Pastor at El Gordo's in Tijuana. And uh, yeah, uh, Craig Casey with North County Auctions. Uh, we uh, sell equipment and we work with businesses and uh, downsized. We just auctioned a, a 30 pack of toilet paper uh, Friday. And uh, that was really fun. <laughs> and we sell guns, coins, and uh, we're general auctioneers. So uh, yeah, um, just uh, just crashing. Cool. And um, are you on LinkedIn? Yes, uh, I am on LinkedIn. Yeah. Or just go to northcountyauctions.com. Okay, the reason I ask is because I want to introduce Sean Cassidy, and Sean is a guru with LinkedIn, and so I want to encourage everyone in the chat box to drop your link in LinkedIn link and try to connect with others in the group. And Sean, I hope I didn't steal all your thunder, but how are you today? Well, I'm blessed. You know, I'm blessed. I have clean water, I have great food, and I have shelter over my head. I'm blessed. Yeah. Um, so my, the taco question, it's a hard one for me because I'm married to a Mexicana. So I'm also often in Mexico. So uh, I'm usually in Guadalajara a lot because my wife's from Guadalajara. So salmon skin, I usually get it there in Guadalajara when I go there. Uh, salmon skin, very crispy salmon skin tacos are my favorite with the salmon skin. That's all it is, is skin from the salmon. Um, those are my favorite tacos. Uh, so kind of particular with that. Uh, difficult when you're married to, to a Mexicana about Mexican food. <laughs> Hard question. Um, so yeah, I, I've been a business growth strategist now for two decades and I specialized in LinkedIn. I beta tested LinkedIn and I used... Uh, been using it for now 17 years. So I was a beta tester for LinkedIn. So um, yeah, so in the virtual spaces, I help people as a business strategist in the virtual space make money. And I often do advanced training in LinkedIn for, for business executives or for, for people that are looking to interconnect to people. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I'm so glad you're here. And I know you're speaking at an upcoming meeting. I'm trying to remember the date. I'm pulling up the website right now. I think it's um, in two weeks, uh, but it is coming up. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so I'm glad you're here today. Thank you so much. So I better call on Mercy because I think Mercy, you said you have to leave early, right? Yeah, I would only have to leave in like the next five minutes for a doctor's appointment. Sorry, so everybody. We better give you some time right now or we'll, we'll miss out on you all together. So please. I'm bummed, Ashley, because I really wanted to hear your presentation, but he's recording it, so I'll be able to listen to it later. Yeah, there you go. Um, my favorite taco, obviously mentioned already a couple times, Mike's Tacos. And, and I just, anything they, they make, I like. But And I don't think they have Adubato, which is like my favorite, but I love their grilled fish taco. It's just so freaking good with their sauces and stuff like that. So yeah, I love it. Um, so I've done many things in my life, but lately uh, my thing is being a reseller on Macari.com. Okay. Um, just started at just a few months ago and it's really going well. Like I'm actually surprised how well it's going. 
and I'm hoping it'll get me back to OB in the next couple of years, or at least San Diego. Um, so that that is my goal to make enough to to be able to do that. Um, and uh, I'm a retired archaeologist. I wrote for the San Diego Reader for years. Uh, so lots of stuff. That's only a little tiny bit of it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm glad you joined us uh, for the call. And I know you have to scoot soon, but try to uh, keep coming on a regular basis. And I will send you the, the recording uh, later today so you can see Ashley's presentation. Cool, because I love it really connects me back into OB and I just love it. Yeah. All right. So moving right along, Mike, how's it going? Mike Dankert. Good to see you again. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so I'm Following along the train with Mike's Tacos. Um, I love the Steak and Shrimp Surf and Turf Burrito. That's where it's at. I probably get that a couple times a week. <laughs> As my girlfriend's also obsessed with that place. <laughs> so yeah, Mike Dankert. I'm the creator of Design Life Growth. Really helping my clients gain and ensure clarity with their goals where they're really living a life true to themselves and creating a path that's actually going to get them there and really achieve their results and not just have it be a wishful thinking or a pipe dream. Mike Dankert, Designed Life Growth. Awesome, good job. And so Nate Church, how's it going down there? And um, tell us about your favorite taco. Uh, my favorite taco is uh, kind of like Casey, El Pastor, but mine is from any street side sketchy pop-up tent in Baja when I'm doing my dual sport rides. <laughs> Pretty much the sketchier the tent, usually the better the taco. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I would love to be doing that right now, riding the Baja <laughs> on my dual sport and getting some sketchy taco <laughs> for like $2 for three tacos and a beer. Uh, <laughs> There's a plenty of those all along the Baja down to uh, anywhere along the coast. Uh, Nate Church, I run On Track Wellness Martial Arts and Fitness uh, in uh, Point Loma right behind uh, Pachanga Arena. So uh, yeah, small group fitness, martial arts for all ages, all levels. And uh, thank you, uh, Ashley, for all the help. Uh, I've gone through all the applications and put everything in, and it's the sit and wait game. There's a lot of updates to Nate, so maybe we can talk afterwards because some good stuff's happening. Okay. Finally. Awesome. Well, good to see you, Nate. And Thalia, how are you today? It's nice to see you. Hello. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you too, Chuck and everyone. Um, tacos. Uh, good question. Very good question. Um, I'm going to go with the rolled tacos at Hugo's. They have a potato rolled tacos. And tacos and potatoes are two of my favorite things. So if you put them together, that's a winner, winner in my book. Um, and grilled fish at Mike's. I'm, I'm also in the Mike's Taco Club as well. Um, I do website design. I do brand consulting. Uh, I'm a creative director, so I do print uh, just about any kind of design work um, or strategy consulting related to branding and design. I work a lot with nonprofit organizations on user interfaces, and um, I work a lot with small businesses on building WordPress websites. And I put my LinkedIn in the window. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And um, great to see everybody. Awesome. Good answers. Uh, so, hey, Marissa, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, your internet sounds a little bit slow. Try one more time. And if you can't answer over the microphone, we could always have you type it in the chat thing and I can read it off. I'll talk slow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Kansas right now, where the internet doesn't really exist, <laughs> and at least not fast internet. So, uh, sorry, I missed last week. I was on my way here. 
I am a local tutor slash engineer consultant in San Diego. I'm just starting my tutoring business. So I've created a WordPress website, which proved to be a little tricky, but not too bad with Chuck's help and the people who write the themes. So always reach out to them for help if you have one of those. Uh, thank you, Chuck, for that recommendation. And I've been doing some engineering consulting lately, uh, some CAD design, but I also do some electronics. And I'm a bioengineer by uh, schooling and neuroscientist. So if you know of anyone who needs some consulting done in either of those two areas, I'm an EEG expert, and which is an electrocephalogram, brain devices. And um, I also teach pretty much any math or science for high school or college. Tacos are hard. I'm uh, from the Midwest and grew, also finished my growing up in Texas. So I'm prone to the uh, Texan, tech, I don't know if you'd call it Tex-Mex, but we have a Mexican uh, grocery uh, grocer right down the way and they make some really good tacos. But in OB, uh, that's hard. Uh, Mike's taco is really good and I'm partial to South Beach as well because of the view. And yeah, so thank you for having me today. Awesome. Great answers. And Bill Shaw, it looks like you got your camera working. Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. Bill, can you hear me? So is he... Okay. Uh, has he typed anything? Maybe I'll send him a message with the chat system. Um, now, I'll go ahead and reintroduce myself. My name again is Chuck Hardwick, and I'm the organizer, or one of the organizers of the group, along with Nate Church. Um, and I also am a small business marketing consultant. I primarily use tools like WordPress, search engine optimization, Google My Business, as well as MailChimp to help small businesses get new clients and get more revenue from existing clients. As far as tacos, I mean, so many people have said Mike's Taco Club. I'm going to have to say <laughs> something different. So I really do like Tacos El Gordo. And I realize they're not in OB, but when I'm down in the uh, Chula Vista area, I try to go in and I love even though it sounds gross, the cabeza tacos are just to die for. <laughs> um, so now, anyone, did I skip anyone? If any, I, I, I know um, Ashley hasn't gone yet, okay, but I was saving her for last since she's speaking. Has anyone else, Bill, can you hear me now? Bill, are you there? Okay, I'm gonna send him a message on the chat and maybe call him on the landline and I'm gonna, I'm um, turn over the b balance. Oops. Wait, 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 Bill. We don't want to screen share. Uh, let's see. I might mm, stop video. I apologize. Um, I'm going to put him in the waiting room. And I apologize for that. Um, and so I'm going to turn over the balance of the time to Ashley. And so Ashley, um, I did set an alarm on my phone for 1255. We need to stop right at one um, primarily. Well, you know what? I can make you the manager of the meeting if you want to continue, but I have to log off right at one. So if it goes over, I'm going to attempt right now to make you, um, let's see if I can make you the host. I hope it doesn't mess up the recording. And then that way, if the call continues past one, I'll log off and you guys hopefully will be able to continue. I've never tried that with Zoom, but hopefully I'll learn that. And so I did set an alarm on my phone for 12.55, um, just to let you know uh, the one o'clock is coming up, but then of course you can continue on if you have time and it goes that long. So without any further ado, I'm going to mute everyone's microphone. Oh, I can't anymore. Now oh. you have control. <laughs> anyway, you can do what you want with the muting and I'll turn over the balance of time to you. I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to call Bill Shaw.
and see if I can walk him through getting back in. So thank you, Ashley. Oh, thank you guys so much. Um, Ashley Wilson here. I'm with Coastal Payroll Service. It's a local uh, payroll company here in San Diego. And I'm super grateful to be able to just jump on. And um, I've had the pleasure of meeting a few of you offline, which is so awesome. Um, and really my, my purpose is to be a resource in the community, especially during everything that's going on with COVID-19. Um, I feel like there's a lot of acronyms out there like PPP, PUA, EIDL. Um, so really and truly just wanted to um, just kind of jump on. Chuck gave me the opportunity to kind of go through something that I created a few weeks ago for um, business owners, self-employed, independent contractors, um, even bankers. I've, I've been able to present this to bankers um, as well and, and just kind of going through the different programs out there for self-employed individuals, sole proprietorships. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the business community that really felt they didn't have a lot of options when all this was going on. So um, definitely want to run through that. Um, also want to take a little bit of time just to introduce kind of who I am and why I um, have fell down the rabbit hole in learning so much about the acronyms. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen and um, we can get started. And then I, and I'm really casual. I don't know, I've been on a few of the OB networking um, presentations, but if you guys have questions, like feel free to ask. I'll try to monitor the chat. Um, but yeah, just kind of make it a fun, exciting payroll conversation. <laughs> So without further ado, let me share my screen. Let's see, I think, and I'm not the best on Zoom, by the way. So I will try my hardest to, uh, to make it happen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes? Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> so like I mentioned, um, Ashley Wilson, Coastal Payroll Services. Um, I am an HCM consultant, um, which basically I help with transitions for clients um, who have employees, for business owners who um, have business or have employees and independent, independent contractors they pay, or employers who just have independent contractors they pay. Um, we provide a service to them to help with um, distribution of the payroll or the amounts, and um, as well as um, at the end of the year, handling like the gear and filings like W-2s and 1099s. Um, who is Coastal Payroll? And um, one of the things about us, it's more than payroll. Um, we're, we are a payroll company and we definitely provide a full service payroll option. But um, really and truly, kind of what makes us different is uh, we, we really wanted to focus on the employee and to treat them like family. And it's definitely a local alternative to the national payroll companies like ADP or paychecks and things like that. Um, you know, really what makes us different, and we call it the coastal difference, um, is unparalleled service. And so what that means, again, service is everything. Um, our clients aren't just a number, um, they're businesses, business owners with specific needs and business goals. And when all this started to kind of unfold with the COVID-19 disaster, um, we decided, like I mentioned, to really take a step back and educate ourselves as much as possible to be a resource for the community. So, um, it's been, it's been really wonderful to be able to help. And it's kind of a, a beautiful twist on a disaster when you can kind of see the community come together and share information and resources and kind of work together to try to dig ourselves out of what has just happened. So um, another thing that makes us uh, unique from a payroll standpoint, um, you, we actually do have dedicated um, account managers. And so uh, that model doesn't really exist anymore. Um, I know a lot of people have the dreaded 1-800 number when they have to reach somebody. <laughs> someone different all the time. So for us, we really took the approach of having a dedicated person that gets to learn your business, that gets that you have their direct phone number, their direct email. Um, so that way it just makes it feel um, a lot more seamless and um, a lot more attentive. So I love that piece. Uh, no auto attendant policy. Um, so what I mentioned before is that dreaded 800 number. Um, when you call into our business, you actually are going to um, talk to somebody and they're going to route you to the right person um, to get the help that you need. And then another cool thing, which I found especially going through um, this pandemic is that we're local. 
So, um, you know, we're here in San Diego. We're right off the 15 and um, in Kearney Villa Road. And um, what I do miss so much is being able to go visit my, my business clients and um, having those face-to-faces. But it's interesting how Zoom has completely taken over. But I do miss that. I can't wait to, like, drive and visit my, my clients. <laughs> I do miss that. Um, our values. And I really wanted to just put this in here real quick because I really, me personally, I feel like, your vision and values is so core to a business and aligning everything together is I think what really separates a lot of businesses from other businesses. So, um, oops. Oh, please. Let me go back. Oh gosh. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> um, respect others and embrace diversity, uh, work with passion, purpose, and dignity, build trust through open, honest, and respectful communication, be reliable and accountable, which is huge in the payroll world. Don't accept mediocrity. Invest in personal growth. Seek balance in work life and wow your audience. Give back to your community and those in need. Have a positive impact on the life of others. Treat your team, clients, and partners like family. And growth and profitability lead to longevity. And you know, sharing those with you guys. Um, and when you kind of do experience the coastal difference, you can kind of see these values just really as the building block of the company that, uh, that we have built, built. So it's pretty cool. And finally, before we get into the land of acronyms, um, services that we provide, as I mentioned, uh, we're a lot more than just payroll. Um, if you really think about it um, from a business owner standpoint, we provide a full service payroll company and, and really payroll is kind of black and white. You know, um, We provide the tax liability associated with it, the year end reporting, the quarterly reporting, the 941s, the DE9s, all those fun, fun stuff, um, new hire reporting, um, payment to employees, to independent contractors. Um, we also offer coastal time, which is a time and attendance feature. Um, coastal benefits. So if you offer medical benefits, um, we have um, integration set up or carrier feeds that can actually um, work and talk to other companies. Um, carrier feeds, as I mentioned, is basically integrations to other products. And when you think about payroll, it's more than just payroll. There's the workers comp side. So Mike Mogger and I, um, I love Mike. I've known him since I was like 13, but basically um, we and I partner so well together because if I'm talking to a business owner who has employees um, in the state of California, workers comp is mandatory. Um, and so something that's really cool that Coastal does is they can work with Ives Insurance to set up like an embedded pay-as-you-go workers' compensation. Um, and again, if you have more questions about the details of this, feel free to reach out um, and we can chat more. But um, just having those integrations to work with others in our community is, is really big difference than a lot of other stuff out there, like the big guys. Um, ACA, that's for um, companies with 50 or more employees, COBRA administration um, for people on severance or terminated from a company. Um, and then we also have like the coastal HR. So HR is such a hot topic right now, especially in the state of California. There's three minimum wage um, uh, amounts in San Diego right now. Uh, sick leave, there's two different sick leave policies based on where your location is. Um, have offering an HR elite product, which is a dedicated person assigned to you that you can go to. Um, our support center, employee onboarding. So how does that um, feel like for a new independent contractor or a new employee starting for your business? What does that look like? What does that new hire packet look like? Who's signing the W-9? Things like that we can help make electronic and easily manageable. Um, and then of course, performance management and then applicant tracking. So um, we can even start basically from the hiring to the firing of a, of a person in your business. So very cool stuff. Um, any questions on that before I jump into uh, uh, COVID resources and in, in the programs out there? Awesome, okay. So um, this is something I created that's been super helpful, like I mentioned, for business owners and also for um, a lot of bankers and, and a lot of partners that I work with. Um, it's When all this kind of started, there was so much noise. There's so much out there. It was really hard to just kind of simplify it. And, um, you know, I found that just kind of by taking a little bit of time and, and putting it into something that people could, could like review and have in their back pocket in case they had um, specific questions on this. I just found it really, really helpful. So um, I put together just a little PowerPoint um, 
of what programs we're going to be talking about today. And so the Economic Injury Disaster Relief, otherwise known as the EIDL, the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance is the PUA, and the Economic Impact Payment, um, otherwise known as the EIP. So uh, to get started, we're going to go right into the EIDL and work our way down. If you have specific questions, scenarios you want to throw, um, please feel free. I'll answer them to the best of my um, ability. But um, some really important um, updates has been um, last week, or actually no, 421. So the week before last was a really big week. Um, the Senate had approved 484 billion on a relief package, additional relief package that was then approved by the House on Thursday the 23rd. And really it came down to 310 billion for additional funds for the PPP, 50 billion for the EIDL and another 10 billion for the EIDL grants. So um, we did kind of see this like little high and low, the PPP. I, and again, I'm really staying out of the dramas of a lot of this. Um, so really just fact-based here, but I know we all have experienced different situations and I know um, there's a lot happening, um, but basically with them granting an additional relief package, this has been a really hot week for a lot of my clients um, with getting funding for some of this stuff. Um, more more like the PPP, but we'll go into that. Um, so with that being said, I don't know why my, ah, there we go. EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, that is backed by the SBA. Um, those of you who, have, who already have applied for it, that's great. They're not accepting new applications. However, I did just look for today before the meeting to see um, if they are again. Um, specifically because they have an additional 60 billion from the week prior um, and only they're allowing limited ag applications for agriculture. Um, so right now, if you haven't applied for this already, it's not something that you can yet. I don't know if this is going to change or not, um, but according to their website, they are um, finishing the applications that were put through before April 15th. Um, I included their phone number because the SBA is an agency that's currently answering the phones. Um, I called them on April um, 3rd and I was 1018th in line. That was really fun, but they did answer unlike uh, some other agencies out there. And um, the lady was very gracious and helped kind of walk through um, what the next steps look like. Um, so uh, some of the attractive features of the, S or of the EIDL, um, who can apply. It was for businesses with less than 500 employees. I pulled this directly from the SBA website. So an individual who operates under a sole proprietorship with or without employees or as an independent contractor, they opened this up on um, April 10th for those people. But as I mentioned, they stopped taking applications as of April 15th. So um, very frustrating for sure. Um, again, uh, attractive um, parts of this would be um, the rate yeah, it's, it's really meant for anyone who had a negative experience with COVID. Um, and so the max size loan is 2 million. Um, the rate for it is 3.75% up to a 30 year loan. Um, really unheard of in business lending. So that's really cool. Um, another thing too, is that there was this $10,000 grant that was associated with this. Um, they did change it two weeks ago to be an $1,000 per person or per employee for the business. So for example, the max that you could qualify is 10,000 or 10 employees. Um, if you had over that, 10,000 was the most you're gonna get, but that is not having to be repaid back, which is pretty cool. And the first loan payment on this is one year after the loan origination date. So that's another really awesome feature of it. Um, next we have the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program, backed by the SBA. However, you apply and your funding is dispersed through a financial institution or an SBA approved lender. They are accepting new applications and guys, if you haven't done this and if it makes sense for you, um, and again, you're going to have to run that scenario for your, for your business, but um, I've seen applications go in on Friday and get funded on Monday. Um, so, I mean, right now I'm getting so many awesome calls and texts like, Hey, applied Monday, funded Tuesday, applied, you know, like it, it's just, it's really cool to see because a lot of these people were waiting on the back end. And I think 
Mercy had mentioned like some of like the bigger companies like Shake Shack and Ruth Chris and, and the dramas there. And so it's, it's really great to finally see the businesses who need it get um, funded for it. So I included the SBA number because again, it is backed by SBA. Also the website for additional information on that. Um, who can apply? Businesses who were in operations before February 15th. Small businesses, nonprofits, individuals who operate a sole prop or an independent contractor, um, eligible self-employed individuals, um, again, less than 500 employees, and even certain franchises can, um, can apply. Um, there is a forgivable portion to this versus a non-forgivable portion. Um, the things that they're allowing, and basically there's three parts to this PPP. The first part is calculating how much you, uh, you could get under the PPP. So basically your, your loan amount, what you can request for. And it's, it's basically you take your um, annual in a 12 month period, whether it's all of 2019 or February of 2019 to March of 2020, you take your income, you divide by 12 and multiply by 2.5 because the government is giving you 10 weeks of this amount for an eight week time frame. And so the carrot for business owners is purpose of the PPP is to get employees and people off of unemployment. Um, so the carrot that they're dangling at business owners is, is like, hey, if you can help us with this, we'll, we'll forgive the amount you paid for payroll. We'll also add an additional forgiveness for you, which will be on your utilities, your business lease, or if you own the building mortgage interest. Um, and then you can use this to kind of help us get people off of unemployment. Um, so the calculations, one piece, the amount funding in your account, I feel, is another piece. And then this forgivable versus non-forgivable aspect is the, is the final piece of this. And like I mentioned, um, payroll counts for forgivable um, portion, utilities, mortgage interest, mm -hmm. and um, your business lease can all go towards this. Now, there are definitely more parameters. Um, for example, and when it comes to the percentage of what you can use, um, so 75% or more can be used on payroll and up to 25% can be used for the utilities, lease, or business interest. So I have clients in, in all different scenarios. I have some bar owners in downtown and if this is crazy, but their lease is $65,000. Well, they obviously have more of their lease than 25%, but they can use up to 25% to go towards it. Um, and then I have some clients who don't have a lease, right? And so they're, they're kind of pushing the entire PPP amount 100% on employee wages. Um, there is definitely, this week has been like the, the drama of the parameters of what the forgivable aspect looks like. I'm getting a lot of interesting phone calls. Um, you know, hey, we're not gonna bring back our employees, but instead we're gonna hire our two-year-old and our four-year-old to um, be on our ads, our marketing ads, and then we're gonna put their money in their tuition accounts. And it's like, oh my God. So people are definitely trying to get a little bit more creative on how it's gonna work for them. But again, to go back to the purpose of a PPP loan, it's to get people off of unemployment. And so the uh, government is even saying, if you're a restaurant and shelter in place still exists and you're not planning on opening, they still want you to take this money and they want you to get the, the employees off of unemployment by paying them their their typical wage and um, even if they're at home, just sitting at home. So that's a really hard concept for a lot of business owners to understand. But again, the entire purpose of the PPP loan is, um, is to get people off of unemployment, even if they're not working right now. Um, some other stuff that makes it attractive too is um, for that non-forgivable portion, um, and that can come in different ways. Um, like if you don't hire all of your staff to match what your 2019 or your 12 month look back was, um, you'll, you won't have the entire payroll amount to be considered forgivable. So whatever is deemed non-forgivable will be wrapped up in a two year loan at 1%. So that's something to, uh, to think about. And then also in addition to that, the first payment isn't due until six months after the loan has been uh, dispersed. So. That's the PPP in a nutshell. Next we have the PUA, and this is a really big one. Um, let's see if it will go to that. Ah, thank you, okay. 
Um, PUA, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. Now, um, this is backed by the EDD, which is the state of California, and you would apply through the EDD. They opened this up on April 28th. Um, I, a little background, my husband owns his own photography studio, and he's really great at what he does. He's not the best when it comes to um, applying for this stuff. Like, he was the guy in the corner that was like, what's an EIN? Like, help, I don't understand. And so I took it off his plate and I did it for him. And it's actually kind of given me a different perspective than just helping our, like my business clients. It's actually like, we're in it too. So I was up at 6 a.m. on April 28th with my laptop, ready to go, um, applied. It was really easy. He got approved uh, the following day. And those were also calls I was getting last week. What really the PUA is, it's a program that helps unemployed Californians who are business owners, self-employed, independent contractors, have limited work history, and others not usually eligible for regular UI benefits who are out of business or services are significantly reduced as a direct result of the pandemic. Um, I took this straight from the EDD because I really just wanted to give facts here and a lot of clients had applied for normal UI and it wasn't meant for them. And so they just had this zero sitting on their claim. There's no live representatives at the EDD right now that I've gotten been able to get a hold of. Um, I have heard through the grapevine someone has. I have not yet been able to. Um, so it was really frustrating. Um, and then you go on like five, six weeks of no income coming through and hearing all these different stories about this extra 600 and all this stuff. And so um, this was a really big deal last week. And um, I will also mention um, down below, you can also be eligible if you qualified for regular UI benefits, but have collected all benefits for which they are eligible. And how I interpreted that was, you know, there's a lot of people getting a lot of income from different places. You might be a sole proprietorship um, that also has a W-2 job and get paid 1099 income from another company. So um, if you have gotten a little bit of UI and you know, now it's come to basically like, how do I say this? If you've collected all the benefits in your claim, you can now apply to the PUA. So um, also those who have applied to the PUA, you may see like a 167 a week and thinking to yourself, ah, I heard it was, it was more than 167. How does that work? What does that look like? Um, there are three phases to the PUA. And so um, basically, and this is gonna be different for every single person based on when your last day of work was. So if you were considered unemployed between February 2nd and March 28th, you will receive $167 each week. Now, phase two comes in between March 29th and July 25th. And that's where you're going to see the 167 a week plus an additional $600 per week. And um, so that's really significant. You're not gonna see that $600 on your claim because the 167 is backed by the EDD, which is the state of California, and that $600 is taken by the feds. And so that's why you're not gonna see it on your claim. So, but just have a little faith that it's going to happen. <laughs> um, for the, and then also too, at the end of phase three, Nate, did you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. You said you're, so I applied, because remember when we talked on the phone, I set my alarm that morning. Yep. And uh, started attacking it at 6 a.m. Good job. Uh, but it took me until 6.30 that night just to get the last two pages. The site crashed. I started counting it after probably like the fifth or sixth crash. And when I started counting, I was up to 25 cr times it crashed between 5 and 5.45. Um, I got a message saying it was received, but okay. I haven't got anything else saying approved or anything. So what I'm going to do is after this call, we're going to, we're going to have you log on off the zoom call, <laughs> but you can, I'm going to have you log on and see what your claim says. Have you gone on to check it? Uh, I went on and checked last Thursday mm -hmm. and it still says nothing. It still says zero. Well, my old claim still says zero, but there's nothing for my PUA and I haven't got an email or anything. So that's a really good, that's a really good statement, Nate. So um, for those who had applied for the regular UI, you got that zero sitting there. The PUA just replaces it. So there's not two separate claims anymore. The PUA kind of separates it. And so all of a sudden when I logged onto my husband's account with his permission, 
um, the 167 was sitting there. So it like updated it. Then um, we also got communication like in the email section that was like back from the original claim that a lot of people were asking me about. They thought it was part of the second claim. So what had happened is the EDD had went in and, and I'm sure you noticed this too, Nate, they added actual additional questions geared specifically for self-employed individuals that differed from the original UI claim. Um, and so by answering those questions, I mean, you fall perfectly in line with, with, with the PUA. I actually wrote down and took pictures of the questions and, and the responses for my husband. So if you want to go through those individually. Um, well, I got, so I got confirmation that my application was received. You know, like I a got, confirmation number? You know, it, at the very end, it said print this form. Yes. But so just like before, I told you with the with the SBA, because I called the SBA that day. They said they couldn't help me. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't received any emails or anything about the PUA since last Tuesday. But it says on my form that I may not hear anything till May 8th. Correct. So we have not gotten any communication about getting approved or anything except that the claim amount changed on his on the system. And it was in twenty fourteen. I haven't looked this week to see if my claim amount changed, but I can check that out. But yes. to let you know, we did get the SBA grant for two employees. That's great. That's good news. And just, and just like they said, when I called the SBA that day, she goes, if you get the grant, it'll just show up. You won't get an email or notification. Correct. If you get a loan, you'll get a loan form. I have so, a step-by-step -step for that too. No so one that we, I know has gotten the loan part yet. We haven't got the loan. We haven't got anything about the loan, but we were doing our typical daily trying to figure out what the hell we're going to do and looked at our account. And I went, wait a minute, why is our account higher? And then I looked and there was an entry from the SBA. That's so. a good sign. And I'll follow up too at the end of this too, and kind of let you know the next steps. Cause I talked to the SBA this lot on Monday and I was like, answered they answered in like three minutes it was like i couldn't even believe it happened but i have a little bit of update on that too because no client that i know of who's received the advance has actually started the loan portion part of it but i do have some steps for that too um with the pua though definitely let's talk nate because when you go back in you should see your claim update and i myself had helped um a friend's mom out as well and um we started at 11:30 a.m. on her application and it took me 2 hours of constantly like refreshing to get the PUA submitted. Next day her claim went through as well. So I was so yeah, it definitely had a lot of crashing on that Tuesday, which I think we all kind of assumed was going to happen. But um but yeah, if you haven't checked, you're not going to get communication, you're not going to get an email. But when you go to so look at your claim, the same login, username, and password with your little pretty little graphic, go in and see if that claim number has been adjusted. And if it has, this is what's gonna it's gonna look like. In four to six days, you're gonna get you're gonna receive a debit card, and that debit card is actually gonna go back into the original of your date of your claim, up until I think April 25th. The EDD on their site says they don't want you to certify for this though. They want it to automatically up until May 9th. They don't want any certifications going through. And that's directly through the website I posted here on the PUA um, PowerPoint page. So no, not certifying until after May 9th. And there's also discussion on the website of changing the 167 to 450 a week if you've made more than 17,000 last year. So that's some, also some really good hopeful news for a lot of people. So it would go to the 450 a week with the additional 600. Um, I don't know if they're going to back, like, look, go back for that um, or if they're going to push forward. But on the website, it does say that if you made more than 17000 and something, your weekly amount can be um, increased to four fifty a week. So that's something to, to think about, too. Um, and then phase three, just to wrap this up and maybe make sure I'm good on time. Um, phase three. Um, we'll go back down to 167 a week if you still need assistance after July 26 to the end of the year through December 26. So that's the PUA. Um, and I wanted to just touch a little bit on the economic impact payments, also known as the stimulus payments, because again, our community needs money coming in. And so this is part of the CARES Act. And so this is a piece of the puzzle. It's backed by the IRS. 
There's no application necessary. There's no live representatives to talk to. I did include the FAQs on this, so you can go to that. Um, and I didn't want to go with who's eligible. I wanted to focus on who's not eligible. Um, and that's basically if you're filing single, married filing separately, head of household and filing status, you'll see the adjusted gross income um, on there for you. Um, you cannot, uh, you will not get this if you are dependent on someone else's return, if you do not have a social security number, if you are a non-resident alien, or if you filed a, a form 1040 NR in the following forms. Um, if this doesn't apply to you, then you should be receiving the funds. Um, and how much is it? So basically, um, depending on the, the income levels, uh, you can get 1200 per individual, 2400 for married filing jointly. In addition, um, each qualifying child is $500. Um, now, I will say this, um, when you go, you can go to the website and you can check your status. Um, they're going to ask you for your name, your social, they're gonna ask you for your date of birth. I don't think they ask you for your name. Social, date of birth, and your address. Your address has to be in all caps in order for you to get to the next like actual screen. So me and my husband, we were checking ours because we never received it. Um, so I had continuously been using like a non cap street address. And um, when I heard this tip, I changed it and boom, it asked us for our direct deposit information to put in. We updated it. So I haven't seen it, but again, it felt a lot more helpful. Um, my mother-in-law, um, she's on social security. And um, we put her information in with caps and it spit out that her check was mailed to her on May 1st. Um, so just so you know, that could be a helpful hint or tip. Um, yeah, that's the EIP. <laughs> um, so I did include this. It's, it really rings true to what I believe. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Now, can you apply for the PPP and not get it? Yes. But if you don't apply for the PPP, you know for sure you're not going to get it, right? And the PPP may not make a lot of sense for everybody. So um, if you did, and this is a caveat I will mention to you, if you did get your PPP amount and you did get approved for PUA, you now need to get off of PUA to accept your PPP. And if this is confusing, feel free to reach out and I can kind of walk you through it too. Because remember, what's the purpose of PPP? To get people off of unemployment. And that's kind of hard for a lot of employers right now because there's a lot of employees making more on unemployment than off. So yes, okay. Um, with that being said, <laughs> I'm gonna open it up to questions. I did not get a chance to look at the tax box, so I can do that too. It's 12.51, so I don't wanna, I wanna be very mindful of people's time. Okay, let so me Ashley, I just, I just pulled up my EDD claim. And uh, so it says, like you said, 167. You cut out though, Nate. Oh, you froze. Did I freeze? Just Nate, Nate froze. Oh, bummer, but that's so good. That's so good. Okay, let me see how I can do this. Sorry, guys. Um, I want to stop sharing. Okay, I think I figured it out. I think Nate looks like he's back now. Oh, cool. Yeah, sorry, I, I froze yeah. up. Um, so my claim history is showing four. The, there's two 167s and then a one, and then two 767s. So did you say, do it, and it says transaction details, transactions, and then additional views and new window certification. Do I need to certify those? So here's the thing. Um, now, can, you, can I go backwards a little bit? So when you logged in yeah. and it said your claim of 167, right? Uh, if I get a claim history, it shows two so, of those and two 767s. Perfect. So that, so I'm assuming, you can tell me if I'm wrong, your claim started on March 15th then. Is that Correct. what it says? Because you had Correct. two 167 weeks. And remember that extra 600 doesn't come in until after um, March 28th. So it seems to me that they were able to pay you for four weeks, I think, because you had two 767s and two 167s. Correct. So yeah, they paid them for a month. So you should be getting that on your debit card. And, you're, and according to the EDD, and I could be wrong, guys, I'm so sorry if I am, but according to the FAQs on the EDD website, it says do not certify until May 9th, after May 9th, and that your card will automatically be updated until May 9th. And I can, um, 
And that'll come in the mail? And that'll come in the mail. The card will come in the mail. And another thing too, because I know a lot of people have never been on, on unemployment before and it can get a little nope. weird. You, you can take your card to your bank and do a cash advance and they will not charge a fee and the money can go into your account. I'm always a big believer um, of taking the money because I feel like if someone can put money on a card, they can take it back. So I would always suggest take the money off the card as quickly as possible and put it in your account. Just personal opinion. It is so what it is. It, so transfer it to your account? Yeah. Get it okay. off that card. You can use the card as purchasing power too. Like you can use it to purchase things. But I just feel like if someone can put it on a card, then someone can take it off of a card and like, yeah. I want my money. So just, I don't know what that means, but. Yeah. <laughs> they, um, I'll let other people ask questions, but thank you, Ashley, because two out of the three of everything has been hit spot on. So. Cool. I'm, and honestly, the. I mean, the pittance of our grant isn't, oh, Chuck, that's my alarm telling them this is almost time for the speaker. <laughs> um, it's, it's not a lot to, it helps us stay afloat, but it doesn't solve our problems, but Correct. at least gives us a fighting chance. And same way with this, with this unemployment gives me and my business. Oh, you went mute, Nate. Helps keep the lights on. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Yay. It went mute for a second there, but um, gay, I'm super happy. And to kind of just clarify with the EIDL, um, if you applied, if you received your advance, that's a good sign. But um, when I talked to her, she said the next step is that there will be an email from SBA. Um, and that's going to basically come from disaster customer service at sba.gov, where you're going to then be able to create a link for the portal. And that should be when that starts for the loan portion. So hopefully that helps. Hi, Sean. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. Great information. Chuck, Nate. Wow. Bringing her in. That's wonderful. I don't think most people would get this kind of information directly organized like this, even from other people. You did a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, a couple of my clients that I work with that had major consulting firms, they did get, you know, large, large ones, like half a million or a million awesome. dollars. Yep. But um, uh, what they did mention to me was something maybe you can touch on is that, for example, if they banked with Chase or a very large bank, um, Chase even said, don't apply. Chase yep. even said, don't apply. Chase was yep. going, losing so much money, right? And they were yes. like in chaos. So um, they immediately didn't apply with Chase, but applied directly through SBA. Nope. And we're funded. Not I SBA. The only time you, the only yeah. time I heard of someone being able to apply with SBA is if they had a current loan with SBA already. Oh, okay. So if they had so a current they relationship, they could apply through SBA. Now in your sentence as well, a lot of the major big institutions such as Chase and Wells Fargo and what have you, they, I try to stay out of the dramas, but they kind of failed. Right. And so um, a lot of business owners were getting emails, including us. We bank at Wells Fargo. Um, apply elsewhere. I'm sorry, but we can't help you. Like we don't have, uh, you know. So the first round was a, just um, a blank show. You can fill in the blank, and then um, the rest of it was um, Lendio, Cabbage, PayPal, Square. Um, I have people applying at PayPal that are, that are now getting funded in 24 hours, like the funds in their account in 24 hours. This is huge information. Um, we actually applied to PayPal, Cabbage, and Wells Fargo. And as of Friday afternoon, our Wells Fargo was the one that came in and actually mm. approved it for us. Just a personal story. And then throughout the weekend, I had clients from Wells Fargo like, oh my God, I got funded. Oh my gosh, signed loan docs. Oh my gosh. And even today, I have gotten... Um, funding today so a lot's happening in the last week so um but that's interesting though yeah it, it, it it's a lot with the uh with the larger ones but i really feel too and i think a lot of you guys can agree like in this kind of time um a lot of the smaller local companies have been able to shine and actually provide that one-on-one -on -one experience whereas even in i know in my world i was helping clients because again the ppp is completely relying on payroll i was helping clients go into their adp portals because i'm very familiar with with their portals um walking them through because they would have to wait three hours online to talk to someone to grab a 940 and my clients are like what's a 940 that's why we pay you guys to do you know people to do it because i don't know this language so again a lot of the smaller banks were the first ones boom lending 
boom, funding. It just, it's been really interesting. I, I locally have, and that's a follow-up question. Are, are you seeing the credit unions um, very active in this? I mean, because I mostly use credit unions for business myself. I only use large banks for when I travel internationally for currency exchange is the only reason I use yeah. large banks myself. Yep. Um, I use credit unions for almost all my business services. And so are, are you seeing any shift in, in that, like in the use of the credit unions, um, different than large banks? In my experience of this whole disaster pandemic world, um, I think I helped 20, I'm sorry, I helped about 45 people with their calculation and none of them went through a credit union. I don't know if they're SBA backed, so I don't know. Again, it's backed by the SBA, so whatever financial institution and lender had to have that already before they, they were able to help. Um, so I saw smaller banks like Mechanics and Banner and um, Bank of Southern California. And what's happening with those people who applied it, like um, Lendio, PayPal, Square, Cabbage, um, what's happening now is that those places are putting them in the hands of smaller banks to actually disperse and go through the forgivable portion with. So even though like they were able to help with the application process, they were unable, they're not a bank, right? So they had to put them in the hands of smaller banks to do so. So like Cabbage is working with Customers Bank. And so when I had a client yesterday, they are like, it's with, with, it says Customers Bank. I'm like, oh, who's your bank? She's like, no, no, no. The bank is called Customers Bank and it's over in Pennsylvania. So that's kind of what that process is looking like right now for those who didn't go through a traditional financial institution. Thank you. Ashley, um, unfortunately it's one o'clock and yes. I have to go. Now yep, yep. I'm gonna end the Zoom meeting and I think it's gonna continue with you as the host, but if it awesome. doesn't- if you, if you just leave the meeting and she's the host, it'll be fine. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Well, um, and then I, I don't know if you have my information. Oh my gosh. I so, oh my gosh. I didn't read uh, all of it. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Chuck. Um, I applied to Chase. I didn't get that, but SBA got back to me and said, where's you're still in the process. Cynthia, apply. Do, or do you want the PPP loan? I don't know. Okay. Just think, Wait. think about, and if you want to go through, you. if you want,